What are you saying, David? I'm saying I can't leave Brookfield. But how? I mean, why? It goes against everything we've agreed. Yes, I know. Everything we've talked about for months. I know, it's crazy, Ruth. I know it is. It's hard to explain. It all just... It just rushed in on me at once. No, you can't do this. Sorry. All our plans. I know, but everything inside me is telling me not to go. I can't leave this house. I can't leave this farm. I can't. But but we've got no choice. The road's going to cut us in half. We don't know that for sure. Yes, we do. Jennifer and Linda and the save campaign, they're not really going to stop it, are they? But even if they don't... Why, David? Why now? Why wait till the very last moment? This isn't easy. Ruth, it's a gut thing. It's to do with who I am. (sighs) This place, my dad, granddad before him, reading those diaries, it made me realise... What? It's the land, who we are. Over all the years, through good times and bad... We've had a responsibility to look after it, to pass it on to the next generation. Now, I can't just up sticks and leave all that behind. No matter how much money Justin Elliott wants to throw at us, this land, this place, it's who I am. I don't know what else to say. Oh, dear. I'm sorry it's taken me so long to understand that, Ruth, and I'm sorry to have messed you and everyone else around. We agreed on this move together. I know. For God's sake, we've been talking about it for months... And now you've suddenly changed your mind. Please listen to me, love. Oh, what about me? I can't just change my mind, can I? I know, I know. The whole reason we chose to go so far, to go to Northumberland, is so that I can be closer to Mum. Yes, I know. And now you're expecting me to tell her that, actually, no, we're not going to be moving up there after all. OK, well, if you're not sure about that one, then take a look at this instead. They've got some great ideas in here for some really cool ethnic looks. I told you, Haley said she's coming round any minute. I know, but she's not here yet, is she? If she's got any sense, she'll wait until the rain stops. I can't concentrate. But it's really important we get this right for you, sweetheart. It's just a room. No, it's not. It's your room in our cottage. Your cottage. Look, the last thing we want is it ending up just another version of the kids' room you had at your dad's. It's not a kids' room. Whatever. You haven't even seen it. We had it decorated exactly how I wanted it when I came back from South Africa. I haven't said I want any of this. It's just to give us some ideas, that's all. Oh, come on, Phoebe. We could have such fun with this. OK, I'll have a look, but... It doesn't mean I'm moving in with you, right? Yes, I know. We've already agreed that. I just don't want you getting the wrong idea. I won't. But you have to admit this place is getting pretty crowded. Your granddad's always going on about it. It's up to me where I live, OK? OK, OK. It's understood. We'll make the room at the cottage a haven. Somewhere you can go whenever you need a bit of space. How does that sound? Oh, sorry. Oh. I hope you don't mind, Kate. It's filthy out there. Hi, Mum. Let's go upstairs. You didn't answer my question, Phoebe. Okay, Phoebs. Phoebe! I'll talk to you later, Kate. Okay? Can't we even talk it through? Make a decision together? Surely we can do that at least. We could, yeah. But I honestly don't think it would change things. Why not? Because. Because this feeling is so. Basic. Leaving Brookfield would be wrong. Not just for me, but for all of us. How can you know that? It's really hard to explain. Try me. OK. My dad, granddad before him, when they ran the farm, they, they were the farm. Right? And it's the same for me. Dad trusted me. But the farm's going to be torn in half. It won't be the same at all. I know, and I thought that that was a good reason to go, but it's not. This is crazy. No, 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 no. That is the challenge that we've got to face, like they did. 
in the Depression before the war, then afterwards when, when everything in agriculture was changing so fast they hardly knew what was hitting them, they didn't shirk those challenges or run away from them. We are not running away. I can't believe you think like all right, that. All right, maybe those are the wrong words, but... What if Hadley Hoch didn't work out? What if we'd missed something? It turned out to be not the dream move we thought it was. But of course it could go wrong. But if we stay here, we know it's going to get much worse, whatever happens. Do we? Yes, we do. At Hadley Hoch, we've got every chance of succeeding. And until now, that's what you thought too. Oh, for God's sake, what's happened to you? I don't know. But it's happened to Mum, too. She understood straight away. It's... Stop. So... Are you telling me that your mother knows all this? You've told Jill before you told me. She was just there. And you're telling me she had nothing to do with it? Mum didn't make me change my mind, if that's what you're getting at. It never occurred to you that maybe you should talk to me first. I'm sorry if I've let you down, Ruth. What about all the meetings I've arranged up there on Friday? Steve and Ros at the farm. The guys working on the parlour. Well, we can can I, I can cancel them. And the solicitors. It took ages setting them all up on the same day. I know. I'm really sorry. There'll be legal fees for cancelling contracts and God knows what else. Have you thought any of this through? No, I haven't had a chance to, but I'll sort that all out. Oh, this is a nightmare. I'm convinced it really is for the best. I'm sorry. I'm interrupting. No, Mum. Yes, you okay. are. Only, I thought you should know. Pip's just arrived. I heard the car. I thought you'd want to be prepared. I can't live with your dad anymore, Phoebe. That's all there is to it. But getting a divorce... I mean, in time, don't you think... Maybe you could get back together? No, love. Wouldn't work. However much I wish it would. Oh, Mum. Yeah, I know that isn't what you want to hear. But it's the truth. But what about you and Abby? You'll still be coming back to Ambridge, won't you? And then Dad will have to move out of the house. No, love, I wouldn't do that to him. He's already in such a state. Does he want a divorce too? I don't think so, but you'll have to ask him that. So, anyway, I'll be staying in Brum with Abby at your nana and grandpa's until I can find a place for all of us. You, me and Abby? If you want to come and live with us, yeah. She's your sister and I'm your mum and... Well, we both miss you loads. I miss you too. But before any of that happens, you'll still see Abby... When she comes back here. What about you? Well, you know, I've got a job in Birmingham for now. And I'm planning on retraining as a teacher. <laughs> oh, so you're not coming back to work in Ambridge at all? No. But I'll be dropping Abby off all the time, at weekends and in the holidays, so you'll still see plenty of us. What do you think of the idea of coming to live in Birmingham? I don't know. I'll have to think about it. Yeah. yeah, of course. There's no need to decide anything yet. I'm surprised Kate hasn't had the decorators in here. <sighs> Bet you miss your old room. <laughs> what exactly happened when you told Dad? What did he say? Well, he was quite upset, obviously. Did he ask why? Yeah. But as I said to him, it just isn't working anymore. So you don't love him? No, I wouldn't say that. There's a part of me that still loves him very much. Then how can you divorce him? It's complicated. I don't understand. Well, loving someone isn't always the same as being able to live with them or wanting to share your life with them. I don't get it. It's about trusting someone. Yeah, I trusted your dad, but he betrayed that trust. Well, that can get better, can't it? Not really, no. Poor Pip. Yeah. Well, she's bound to be disappointed. Yeah, after all the hard work and effort she's put into planning our new life. Shall I go and talk to her? No, 
I'll do it. I'll let her calm down first. What about the boys? I'll do that later. No, no, I will. When are they back? Another hour or so. Right. Right, well, um, that ditch Eddie told me about, that's blocked. It's dark. Yeah, but the rain's easing off. David! <sighs> um, before I go, I know this sounds obvious, but can we make absolutely sure that word doesn't get out beyond an Egypt family until I've had the chance to start cancelling arrangements? Of course. So not even Shula and Elizabeth, Mum, and uh, Ruth will we'll tell Pip and the boys to keep it to themselves. Ruth? Well, we're not exactly going to go around broadcasting it across the village. No, I suppose not. Um, right, well, I'll see you in a while, then. Would you like a cup of tea? No. I'll put the kettle on anyway. The meal should be ready in an hour or so. I'm not hungry. Perhaps you will be by then. It did come very much out of the blue, you know. Yeah. I'm sure it's difficult to understand. But seeing David over the last few days, how drained and exhausted he's been. And we've all been tired. We usually are. No. This has been much more than that, Ruth. I honestly think leaving would kill him. Just as it would me. It must have been a big part of it for David. Knowing how upset you were. Perhaps. Though I'd say it's more fundamental than that. Would you? Yes. I don't think I had much to do with it at all. Because I'll be staying in Ambridge whether you move or not. No, Ruth. It's because David's an archer. And the archers belong at Brookfield. As simple as that. Yes. They always have... And they always will. Jenny, I must thank you again for bringing me out. <laughs> That's all right. A little bit of shopping is just the tonic I need at the moment. <laughs> yeah, I'm enjoying it. Brian's being so snippy. What was it he described us as? The invasion of the Amazons? <laughs> <laughs> well, he thinks being called the Boudicca of Borsuch has gone to my head. <laughs> well, it has, hasn't it? No, <laughs> not at all. Anyway, it's all in a good cause. Oh, don't you think this pashmina is gorgeous? Oh, it's lovely. Is it real silk? Mm. And it's your colour too. Thank you, Jenny. You've persuaded me. Oh. <laughs> now, where shall we go next? Um, didn't you want to look at handbags? Oh, yes, I do. Um, <clears throat> just this, please. Thank you. But not from here, but we'll go somewhere else. Yeah, if you'd like to put your card in here, please. And uh, maybe a coffee. Yes, well, that goes without saying, darling, and the coffee's on me. Ooh, well, that's nice. <laughs> uh, I'm afraid it hasn't been accepted. What? Your card. Really? <laughs> Silly me. I probably put the wrong number in. Oh, it's easily done. I'll try again. There we go. Thank you. <sighs> no, all this technology and it still goes wrong. No. Do you know, I haven't had a new bag in ages. Hello. What about the one you brought back from your holiday? Oh, well, yeah, 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 but I mean, that doesn't count. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. There still seems to be a problem here. Oh. Well, well, it must be the machine. Do you have another card? No, not on me. What's going on, Jenny? This is the last thing I need. Oh, well, never mind. Let me pay for this, and then we can sort it out at the bank later. Is this the one? You won't forget the tail tape, will you? David, I know how to deal with my status, right? Sorry? Did you want something? Uh, no, just to let you know that I've, I've told Stephen Ross at Hadley Hoch. That's good. They were pretty angry mm. at being messed around. As you can imagine. I thought one of the others was limping, but it's OK. I'll keep an eye on her. OK, good. So, that's done. Well, don't expect me to feel sorry for you. No, I don't. Rodways weren't all that happy, either. Nor were the Northumberland agents. Well, it wasn't exactly going to make us popular. No. Mm. Steady, girl. So, that's it. There's no going back now. 
What do you want me to say? Nothing. I'm... Doesn't matter. I've still got to call Yarrick and Dale, but at least the solicitors will tell Justin. You don't have to keep telling me. No, sorry. Mm. Easy does it. How was Ben when you saw him off to school? Still upset. He's really worried about how Heather's going to take it. Of course he is. So, um, have you decided when you're going to tell her? No, I'll sort it in my own time. At least that's one thing I can still do myself. Oh! Mm. Oh, sorry, girl. Sorry. If you don't mind, David, I need to get on. machine rejected my card. Oh, can I see the statement? Yeah. Oh, good heavens. He's cleaned me out. I better check my other accounts. What now? Well, I just wondered if you needed a hand with anything. No, I'm doing just fine, thanks. Hey. That's the first stillborn today, isn't it? Yeah, I'm glad to see. Well, not many left now. Should be done by the end of the week. Um, I've just had a call from Justin. Very polite. I bet he was. Right, then. Come on, you. Let's get you wrapped up. According to him, I was the one losing out. A golden opportunity spurned. Hardly likely to get another offer remotely close. That's it. Go on. Anyway, hopefully that's the last we'll hear from him. No, he'll be working on his next deal. It won't mean anything to him. Maybe, but he obviously had big plans for the farm. Including a vineyard, according to Carol. And including demolishing it. Yeah. Have you sorted out the barren news for market? Uh, no, but it won't take long. Well, why don't you go inside then? I'm sure your mum will have a nice cup of tea waiting for you. Oh. <sighs> Come on, Ruth, we can't go on like this. Like what? Obviously you're upset, but it doesn't help anyone to let it fester. We've got to... Well, at least talk about it. Well, what's the point? You've made your decision and now you've cancelled everything. Oh. That's it. There's nothing more to say. There's just so many amazing ideas in here. Oh, that's good. Oh, I love this ancient Egyptian colour scheme. Look, gold, green, blue, earth, red and brown. Uh, does it come with free hieroglyphics? Ha, ha. Wow, look at the red in that hallway. It really opens it up. You got the mustard there? Mm-hmm. There you go. Oh, thanks. I really want Phoebe on board with a bold colour scheme to offset the minimalism. Oh. The minimalism, eh? Yes. I've been talking to Linda about feng shui principles. She gave me a lot of valuable insights. What? Oh, peacock. I don't know why you're so down on my plans for the cottage, Dad. Look, as long as you don't expect me to foot an enormous bill, I don't care what you do. Of course there won't be an enormous bill. That's what minimalism's all about. Oh, really? It's getting rid of things, not accumulating them. The emphasis will be much more on decor than contents. Oh, best talk to your mother, then. Now, can I have my lunch in peace? That's not asking too much. I am talking to Mum, and Lillian's coming over to the cottage to give her advice as well. Oh, good. That's bound to help. If you want me, I'll be upstairs looking at these. I'll make sure to call you. Oh, no. What are you doing back? I thought we'd be gone all day. Oh, never mind that. Poor Lillian's been wiped out. What, literally or metaphorically? Brian, this is no time for jokes. Both, if you must know. Oh, it's Matt. Oh. He's stolen my money. What? Two cards, a cab's empty. Can you believe it? <sighs> Lillian, that's... Appalling, uh... I know. And there's nothing to be done. I never dreamed to do that to me. So, I've no idea how much I've got. What else is taken? Have you stopped everything? Well, of course I did. Look about locking the stable door. Uh, and checked everything else? Well, as much as I can in a short time. The only thing I'm sure of at the moment is the Dow House. And Jenny and I have discussed it. I'm going to have to put it up for rent while I sort out Amside. But where are you going to live? Here, of course. Oh, bless you, darling. Oh, hi, love. 
I was going to do that. Well, I thought it'd be one thing out your way. Right. Thanks. I'll, uh... I've arranged to see Sheila and Elizabeth at Lower Loxley tomorrow. So uh, I'll be out in the morning. I'm not your keeper. I mean, it's just Kenton and that's it. Everyone who needs to know. Will you just stop giving me updates? No, I won't. Well, what does it matter what I think? Of course it matters. It matters more than anything. We're not leaving Brookfield because you don't feel like moving. How does what I think fit in there? <sighs> Something you reveal to your mother rather than me. I told you, Ruth, it was my decision, not hers. This has got nothing to do with Mum. Nothing at all. wish your father would tidy up after himself. What's this about? Huh? Oh, it's a scratch messiah, Darrington Call Society putting on at St Stephen's for Easter. People turn up with a score and rehearse during the day and perform the same evening. Sounds like a nightmare. Oh, have to know the music, of course. I'd rather you than me. Oh, I'm sure Alan will be keen. You never know. Might even manage to get your father interested. Um, actually, Mum, I've been meaning to have a word... He- you see, mm? I'm a bit short of cash at the moment. Oh, Kate, what do you need it for? The fees for my course, mainly. Well, I thought you had that sorted out. Some of it, yeah, but not all of it. Well, I distinctly remember you saying you'd be using the money from John Tregora. <laughs> I have, but it costs more than that. Oh, Kate, well, you'll have to talk to your father. Oh, but he's already making such a fuss about doing up the cottage. Well... That's between you and him. Right now, with Lillian's problems, we've got much bigger things to think about than whether or not you can afford your course fees. I mean, most people take out a loan, don't they? I can't believe how unsupportive you two are. Uh, Shall I go out again? No, Dad. All I'm asking for is a bit of help with the fees for my course. Oh, (laughs) the one you were paying for. Lots of students get help from their parents. Lots of students get part-time jobs. A job? Are you kidding? How am I supposed to find time for that? Well, I imagine in the same way the other students do. Yeah, absolutely. I'll tell you what, Kate. If you show willing by getting a job... Then maybe we could help top it up. How does that sound? But, Dad, this course will almost certainly lead to highly paid work anywhere in the world. (laughs) I thought it was all about ending poverty. It is, but I'll be qualified. Think of it as long-term dividends coming from a small, short-term investment. What? You're going to give us a proportion of your top salary, are you? When you finally start earning it. Dad! I'm sorry, Kate. I'm not prepared to be a cash machine whenever you feel a bit short after a night out in the student union bar. That is so unfair. Look, if you show willing to help yourself, then perhaps we can come to some arrangement. Sometimes you two just don't get it at all. Beautifully handled, darling. Uh, It's about time that girl learned to stand on her own two feet and stopped depending on us for handouts. Talking of which, how long are we looking at Lillian staying? Lillian will be staying for as long as she needs. And that's that. You said to Linda, our farm won't be viable once the road is built. So how's that changed? If we can get them to put in a bridge for the cows. If not, maybe we go with the robotic milkers. Let's start thinking outside the box. (laughs) Outside the box? We discussed all this months ago and decided to move elsewhere. All right, I'm open to all ideas. And that's supposed to make me feel better. Yes! Yes, it's it is! It's not just about me, though, is it? Sean and Elizabeth have got big plans. Not to mention Kenton, who's already throwing money around like it's going out of fashion. I'm not proud of myself, Ruth. You know, David, you were right when you said we've always done things together. But this time, when we made just about the biggest decision of our lives, you changed your mind without consulting me. Hang on, Ruth. No, you listen to me. You've told me that no matter what I say, it makes no difference. You've reversed all our decisions and pulled out. Ruth. So just you tell me, because I'd really like to know, what exactly does that say about us and our future? I've no idea. I mean, it did sound urgent. Perhaps there's a delay in exchanging contracts or something. Hmm. Perhaps. But why here instead of Brookfield? Oh, I don't know. I'm sure we'll soon find out. Oh, I hope David won't be long. I've got to get back for a lesson at 12. Yeah, I've got the PR company coming this afternoon. 
I want to make sure everything's ready for them. <laughs> Sounds exciting. Well, it's purely speculative at the moment. They make high-quality promotional videos and presentation packs for places like us. Oh, sounds good. They don't come cheap, of course. But if I'm ever going to be able to afford something like this, then now's the time. <laughs> Definitely. Carpe diem and all that. Have you heard anything about a performance of Messiah at St Stephen's? Yes. Post has gone up in the porch. Darrington Choral Society, isn't it? Mm. It's a scratch one. You know, come along and sing. Yeah, that's what I heard. Do you fancy it? Oh, I don't know it that well. well. Dad was always listening to it, though. It's in your genes. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, go on, Sheila. Well, it might be quite special singing it in St Stephen's at Easter. Yeah, that's what I thought. I'm going to see if I can persuade Mum and Auntie Chris, too. That's a good idea. Yeah, maybe I will. Roy! Come on, Roy, open up! You ain't sick, are you? I heard from Linda you ain't been in the work since last week, so I've, I've come to see if you're OK. Oh. No, I've got your key, Roy. I, I'll let myself in. Oh, for heaven's sakes. Look, are you going to let me in, son? God, look at the state of this place. Yeah, I know. And you're still in your pyjamas. Who cares? I'd just be glad you're not Jazzer and Neil trying to do the pigs in this weather. Yeah. I'd be knee deep in mud. It's gone half ten, Roy. Look, don't you think maybe you should get dressed? <laughs> What's the point? Oh, no. OK, well, it's up to you. I could tidy up if you like. What does it matter? It's only me in the place. Oh, Roy. I know it's hard for you at the moment. So... <laughs> Just a bit. Uh, if there's anything I can do to help you know you only have to ask. Thanks, Dad, but I'm not worth bothering about. Mate, don't say that. Of course you are. I care about you. <laughs> You're on your own, then? No, no, I'm not. Everyone hates seeing you like this. Yeah, right. You seen Tom recently? No. Not for days. Well, he's a, he's a busy man. Y you should give him a call. He he's been through a bit himself, so he knows what it's like. Dad. But it might help. There's nothing anyone can do to help. Oh, Roy... Be better off just leaving me alone. Well, uh, uh, at least let me tidy this place up a bit. You really don't have to. And if you don't want to talk, that's fine. But hey, how about going having a shower, getting dressed while, while I sort things out down here, uh? Dad? And at least it'll look look a bit nicer if anyone else comes round. David, what exactly are you saying? Well, it's very simple. We're not going to be leaving Brookfield after all. Really? Well, what's happened? Oh, David... I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sure this must be a shock to you both. And I know that there are huge financial implications to think about. No, but... it's OK, David. You don't have to apologise. Well, none of that is important now. The most important thing is I'm not losing my big brother and his family. And that's wonderful. Oh, oh, thank you, Liz. Oh, I mean it. <laughs> Gosh, yes, of course. But why the sudden turnaround? Always believe in your soul. you got the power to know you're indestructible. That's better. All I did is get dressed. Oh, you've had a shower too. Oh, thanks for this. Now, uh, how about something to eat? A piece of toast? I want to do your proper breakfast. I'm not hungry. You sure? Yeah. I know you're trying to help, but... but look, I ain't going to tell you how to live your life, Roy. No. But keeping this place in order wouldn't be a bad place to start. You don't want Phoebe staying at home farm forever, do you? I don't know. 
I can't see. I can't see into the next minute, Dad. Never mind the next day. Well, take it a minute at a time then. You've got to make it look like there's still a place for her here. Yeah. We ain't having you go under, Roy. Who's that? Uh, I don't want to see anyone. No, that's OK. No, no, I'll get it. All right, come in. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, come in. Roy, oh, it's Phoebe. Hey, don't want you standing out there getting drenched. Thanks. Yeah, it's awful out there. Here, yeah, take your coat off. Oh, thanks. Oh, uh, hi, Phoebe. Uh, wasn't expecting you. Uh, no, I haven't got any classes till this afternoon, so I thought I'd come round. Oh, well, uh, well, it's great to see you. It's looking nice and tidy. Oh, it's thanks to your granddad. Oh, uh, no, I, I promised Vicky I'd get back to babysit, so I'll, uh, I'll leave you two to it. <coughs> yeah, thanks, Dad. Uh, and, and thanks for... Um... Has he got you doing all the housework now, then? Oh, yeah, yeah, something like that. <laughs> Bye, love. Mm-hmm. I'll see you soon. Uh, look after yourself, son. Uh, yeah, yeah, I will. So? How's things? I felt better. Uh, do you want a cup of tea? Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll go and put the kettle on. I saw Mum the other day. Oh. Right. She said you're getting divorced. Oh. She said she still loves you, but she can't live with you anymore. Yeah. About the size of it. But I wanted to hear it from you, too. You still love her, don't you? I know you do. So if you still love each other, why are you getting divorced? It's... It's not easy to explain. I don't care what's happened. If you love each other, you should be together. Oh, darling. Is there no way? Please, Dad. I've hurt her very deeply, Phoebe. Something I never thought I would ever do to someone so lovely. So no, sweetheart. I don't think there is a way. Well, yes. To say it's come as a bit of a surprise would be an understatement. Oh, sorry. After all the plans Alistair and I have been making. Yeah, I know. I'm so sorry. You must stop saying that, David. But. Yes? It's an important but. I am hugely relieved that we won't be losing you after all. Oh, thanks, Shula. Oh, and Mum must be delighted. (laughs) Yes, she is. Of course she would be. But what about Kenton? Have you told him yet? God, no. I don't know whether to spoil their holiday or not. Yes, of course. They've been looking forward to Australia so much. Is it fair to put a dampener on it while they're still there? Oh, is it fair not to let them know, though? They've already spent a fortune. Yeah, but to ruin their holiday. I thought, you know, let them enjoy the rest of the time they've got out there. But that might just be cowardly. Mm. One thing I do want you both to promise me, that. Oh, what's that? You won't tell anyone else about this until I've spoken to Kenton, will you? Of course not. Oh, no, no, I won't. Apart from Alistair. Yeah, sure. I mean, I know it'll be difficult, but it wouldn't be right. So, um, how's Ruth feeling about it? Yes. She must be upset, considering her plans to spend more time with her mum. Um, yeah, upset is about right. Oh. So it wasn't a unanimous decision, then? Uh, not exactly, no. No. We're still, uh working through some issues. In fact, right now, I'm not at all sure when, or even if, Ruth will forgive me. All right, all right. Oh, hello, love. You OK? No, I'm not. <coughs> Granddad. Oh, what's the matter? Everything. Oh, oh, Phoebe, what's up? Isn't like you? I know. 
Well, what can I do to help? Stop them. Please stop them getting divorced. Divorced? Yes. Who said anything about getting divorced? Both of them. What? I mean, just now? Dad did, yeah, but Mum a couple of days ago. Oh, no. They both said it, so it must be true. <sighs> no, I, I, I mean, I knew it wasn't good between them. I never thought they wouldn't be able to patch it up. That's what I thought, too. Uh, and they both said it? Dad doesn't want to, but Mum said she can't live with him. <sighs> No wonder he's in such a mess. Oh, they both said they love each other, but it doesn't make any difference. Yeah, well, sometimes it can get like that. I don't understand. Yeah, no, 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 I know, love, I know. It isn't easy. <laughs> Why can't they get back together? Well, sometimes these things just aren't meant to be. <laughs> Why has everything gone so wrong? Oh, I don't know, love. I know Dad did something really terrible and stupid. Well, doesn't he regret it now, eh? But I really thought Mum would forgive him in the end. <sighs> so did I. <laughs> I can't bear it. I just want it to be the way it was. Oh, I know, love, I know. <laughs> you just let it all out, eh? That's it. You cry as much as you want. One, two, three, and up. Steady as you go. I will. Jinx. This job doesn't get any easier. Uh, at least it's not raining. Aye, uh, but that's not going to last. Look at yon sky. Uh, it could be worse. How's that? Uh, going round breaking the ice and filling the troughs. Uh, I hate that. Frostbite city. These pigs don't appreciate what we go through for them. Oh, oh. Well, steady there, big man. You OK? Yeah. Yeah, I lost it. I'm fine. Almost there. Uh, set this all day. One, two, three, and done. Oh. Easy. Aye, uh, right. Did I tell you I went to the market with Tom yesterday to sell a couple of bullocks? No, but I have a feeling you're gone. <laughs> How was it? Yeah, we're good. I've never seen the whole process before from beginning to end. Did you get to put them in the pen at the ring? Oh, no, no, Eddie did that. They got a good price. Nice one. You'll be what you have a go at putting them in the pen yourself next time, though, eh? Uh, I don't know. I'm not sure I'm ready for that. Ah, uh, you'll soon get the hang of it. Tom took us for a fry-up to celebrate. Lucky boy. Nobody's ever took me to a cafe just for going to an auction. <laughs> On to the next one, eh? You know it's Tom's birthday? Of course I do. Uh, we're going for a drink later at the pool. Do you want to come? Oh, uh, mate. Get the chance to blag a free dinner at you. <laughs> this place is fab. Well, it's the middle of Darrington and, and it's a decent size. Best one so far? Definitely. So, how would the conversion work? Well, well I guess the big decision is what to put at the front. Mm -hmm. You know, is it a tea room with lovely upcycled things to sell? Or is it a place to pick up furniture bargains with coffee and cakes on the side? Mm. Which is the most lucrative at the moment? Well, Ambridge Tea Service, no doubt about that. Oh, so maybe that's a clue. <laughs> You're right. So, what? Cafe area here at the front. Uh -huh. And set up the kitchen in the room off there. And room for a nice display in the bit round the corner at the back. Oh, Harrison. This place does feel like a goer, don't you think? Yeah. And the only downside is the area. Could be smarter, I agree. But at least there are lots of people around. Yeah. You're amazing, Fallon. I'm standing in an empty building and I can see it working as a trendy little calf. Oh, well, you know, there's a long way to go before then. And, and I don't know how much Kenton's going to give me yet. I'm, might not be able to afford to rent somewhere this big. No, I hope he's not spending it all in Australia. You no, know, <laughs> Mum won't let him. Hey, you know, I was thinking, how about a karaoke night at the Bull to get things really buzzing before they come back? Oh, now you're talking. Yeah, you'd be up for it, yeah? Oh, of course. <laughs> Why we go on working under these conditions beats me. Most folks that have walked ages ago. Uh, do you think I haven't done this myself, Jasser, for less than you're getting paid? You tell him, Neil. Aye, well, sometimes these things need saying. 
And you do like saying it. Mm. Hey, you. We're sticking together on this, you. I'll tell you what, Jazzer, if it helps. I'll buy you both a drink later. Uh, well, we'll do for starters. Once you two have finished here, why don't you find somewhere a bit warmer for the rest of the day? Uh, yeah. You know, I was thinking the same. When you're done, come and find me, will it? Great. Shall we get on, Neil? Oh, right, yes. Uh, see you guys later, then. See ya. <laughs> Cheers. Uh, see you later. Any excuse for a comfy life. You know what's wrong with this place? Nah. Uh, what? Too many generals, no enough foot soldiers. Oh, no, I'm glad we've got round to having a chat. Mm. I've left it far too long. Yeah, well, you've had a lot on your plate. Anyway, you've got some great ideas. Yeah, I'm sure we could go further with the bacon. Yeah. After all, you've already got the infrastructure in place. Exactly. Look, I'll go through these figures of yours and get back to you, OK? Yeah, when you've got the time. Between us, we ought to get it flying. Yeah. Well, let's hope so. Hmm? With the two of us working together, how could we possibly fail? <laughs> well, that's grand. Thank you, Tom. Oh, before I forget, happy birthday. Oh, thanks, Neil. Have you seen your dad today? Yeah, I went up there this morning. Ah, he'll be proud of you, Tom, when he hears your plans. You've kept your vision. Thank you. But well, that reminds me, Gran wants me to drop by. I'd better get off. Poor Phoebe. It's so sad when families break up. Yeah. Well, I'm still hoping to persuade him to come out tonight, but I don't think he will. Sometimes you just don't want to socialise. No. Anyway, I just wanted to say thanks, Gran, for the money you put in my birthday card. Oh, that's all right. It's only burning a hole in my pocket these days. Well, I'll make sure I spend it on something nice. Good. We're hoping Dad'll be home in the next couple of weeks. That'll be the best present of all. Yes, your mother told me earlier. Oh, it'll be so nice to have him home again. You know I've offered to help, don't you? If Tony needs a nurse, I'm more than happy to pay for one. Oh, well, Mum reckons we'll be OK on that. I know, but if the situation changes, you will remind her, won't you? Of course, Gran. Now, you must be wondering why I've asked you over here today. Um, well, it's my birthday? No, it's not just that. I want to talk to you about my will. Oh. Actually, I've been meaning to talk to you about that, too. Have you? Yes. See, the you thing see, is... Uh, <laughs> you go first, Gran. All right. I'd like to make some changes to it. I've been thinking long and hard, and I don't think it was very fair at all, particularly on your father. Oh, that's exactly how I feel. Really? Yes. Basically, it was wrong of me not to question it in the first place. Oh, Tom. I never gave any thought to what it would do to Dad. Neither did I. I feel terrible about it. Well, that makes two of us. I told Tony how I felt just before Christmas, and he heard what I said. Did he? Yes. And now he's about to come home, it, it seems even more wrong. Oh, I'm so glad you feel the same way. Oh, I do. I'm sure the will was to blame. I was to blame. For things leading to the accident. No, for we've all had a go at playing that game, but no one could have seen it coming. He might never have bought that bull in the first place. And then again, he might. Who can say? I blame myself for being in Canada and not being here when I was needed. <laughs> We're as bad as each other. <laughs> but if you're happy for me to change the will, then I'll talk to Helen and see what she thinks. That's fine by me. Um, would you mind coming with me when I do? Not at all. Yes, that's another one for the karaoke. I reckon that's at least half a dozen who've said they'll get up and sing already. Well, not the joker who's given up singing for Lent. <laughs> <laughs> so, what's next, then? What do you mean? I'm guessing there's more than karaoke and a brand new cafe in your head. <laughs> so... All right, well, I was wondering if people would go for a pop-up Easter picnic on the green or Lakey Hill. If you can guarantee the weather. There wouldn't be much call for it at the moment. It'll be nicer by then, trust me. Oh, you've got the weather under control as well, have you? <laughs> oh, yes, I do. Jeez, even for later, <laughs> gorgeous. I'm at work. <laughs> Right, what can I get you? You sure we're no interrupting? <laughs> no, sorry about that. 
very unprofessional. I'm a policeman, I know. <laughs> you thought you ever stopped, Jazza? No, if I can help it. It's standing still that gets you into trouble in my experience. <laughs> I hope he's not setting you a bad example, Johnny. <laughs> All the time. <laughs> so what do you want? Uh, no sign of Neil yet. So in that case I'll have a lager and forget the whiskey chaser. <laughs> right, so that's a lager. Pint? Please. And Johnny? Uh, orange juice, please. Uh, is Tom in yet? Uh, no, I haven't seen him. Uh, won't be a mo. Thanks, then. Oh, here he comes now, he's more. Should we sing happy birthday? Not unless you want to really embarrass him. Well, that's the whole point. Happy... No, just a dog. <laughs> All right, be a spoil sport if you like. Oh, yeah, you too. Ah, oh, you haven't got any drinks yet. Uh, what would you like? Oh, don't worry, Gran, it's my round. Nah, Johnny, I'll get these. Oh, I'd let Mum if I were you. She doesn't come in here much. <laughs> <laughs> OK, thanks. Strike while the iron's hot. <laughs> Fallon's already sort nails. OK, I'll go and add our orders, sir. Uh, Tom, will you will you come and help me carry? Yeah, no problem. Uh, look who's here now. Better late than never. Has anyone seen suits? I'm running a bit late. Aye, she's sitting in the ploughman's with a face that thunder. Oh, no. It's her anniversary and I'm surprising her with dinner at Botticelli's. Don't worry, Neil, he's only kidding. <laughs> she's waiting for you with a drink. Oh, that's all right then. Uh, look, I'm sorry I'll have to get you to that drink I promised another time. Aye, I'll hold you that. Might as well go and find a table there, eh? Yeah, before they all go. It's getting busy in here. Uh, did Dad tell you he'd got a card from Kirsty? No. All it said was that he was in her thoughts and she was thinking about the rest of us too. That's nice. Yeah. I thought it was rather sweet, actually. Very thoughtful. Yeah. Yeah, it was. I've got a table out by the windy. Oh, good. Jazza, can we ask a favour? Maybe. Depends what it is. Dad's likely to be coming home in the next couple of weeks, but he won't be able to manage the stairs for a while yet. So, we were wondering if you'd help us shift some furniture around. Put a bed in downstairs, that sort of thing. That sounds like good news. Tony's coming home. Yeah. It is such a relief to know I won't have to keep on making that journey all the time. <laughs> well, I'll bet. Well, I see. I What's in it for me? Does a couple of pints sound OK? Well, make it three and I'm your man. Done. Oh, thanks, Jazza. <laughs> Parenting? Kind, eh? Yeah, well, who wouldn't they want to be paid in lager? <laughs> Sorry, it's taken a little while. We were out of Pinot Grigio. Oh, you should have said I could have had something else. Ah, no, don't be daft. Right, that's £13.60 altogether. Here you are. Thank you. And uh, have one yourself. Oh, thanks, Pat. That's very kind. Right, Jazza, here's yours. All right, so let's go and sit down. There you are, Johnny. Thanks, Gran. Oh, let me clear up a bit for you. I, I take it you will be coming to the karaoke then? Well, there'll be prizes. You might want to hold me back for fear of blowing the opposition out the water. <laughs> My bohemian rhapsody is a thing of rare beauty. <laughs> Don't believe him. I've heard it. Hey, maybe he could be in a sing-off with Harrison. Would you like a sneak preview? Actually, before we get to that... Can I propose a toast to the birthday boy? Oh, Mum, do we have to? Yes, we do. It's so good to have you back. It's made a difference to us all, including your dad. <laughs> so, here's to Tom. Happy birthday! Happy birthday! Happy birthday. Happy birthday. <laughs> You know, Ruth, the more I think about it, the more the robotic milking idea seems to make sense. Really? Let's assume the road goes through and the farm gets split in two. What do you think about a smaller herd? I don't know, maybe 150 cows? That'd be on the other side. And over here, we could stick with a mainly arable rotation, but with grass silage. What do you think? You're asking my opinion? Of course I am. Come on, love. If you could change your mind over the move after all the hours of discussion we had over that, how do I know you're not going to change it over something like this? Yeah, all right. I can understand you feeling like that. Oh, you can't. But the fact is that we are where we are and we have now got to come up with a new plan for this farm. What do you mean, we? Exactly that. It's got to be you as well. Really? Ruth, you've built this business as much as I have. Especially the dairy side, you know that. 
I'm glad you recognise that, at least. Well, of course I do. And I can't possibly plan for the future without your input. We both know that. Maybe. As it happens, this whole situation may turn out to be a blessing in disguise, even the road going through. <laughs> How do you work that out? All right, we've both read the projections. The dairy industry is going to be a very difficult one to be in over the next few months. Oh, that's true. So going on in the same old way isn't an option, not for any dairy farmer. We've all got to find ways of doing it better. We did. We had an excellent plan. <sighs> well, we can do it here as well. We can still try to... to find new ideas, to, to meet the situation head on. So, come on, let's, let's use this opportunity to think it all through from scratch. Maybe we can have a smaller herd and make better margins. Maybe we'll look back on this upheaval and think what a great thing it was that it happened. What? I think you're straining into fantasy now. Well, all right, maybe, but... <sighs> look, the fact remains that we need to come up with a new plan for the future, and there's no way that I can do it without you. Brookfield has never had anyone like you... You're a farmer like me and Dad and Dan. We are the first proper partnership. That may be so. It is. But I'm not going to think about it now. I've decided I'm going to see Mum at the weekend. She needs to know. Oh. OK. And I'm taking Ben with me. You'll have to look after everything while I'm gone. Yes. I will. Hey Charlie. What can I do for you? Logs. I saw you and thought, uh, well, there's the man I need. Oh, well, it's uh, my dad, actually. But you could have a word, couldn't you? Ask if he can deliver me a load. Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, where to? Your house? Could he do that? Yeah, no problem. I'll mention it to him. Great. Thanks. Actually, there's um, something I've been meaning to talk to you about. What's that? Uh, the tenancy on the 50 acres. Oh, yes? Well, I've sold my cows... So I, I don't need it anymore. No, of course not. So I'd like to give notice on it. You'll need to put it in writing and send it to the estate office. OK. I don't know the term offhand. It's from January the 1st. Well, you've missed that, so we're talking January the 1st, 2016. Really? Well, that's when your 12 months' notice will start from. It's going to be nearly two years. Yeah, I'm afraid so. <laughs> right now, what with having to sell everything... Mm -hmm. We've got a wedding coming up. Well, when is that, by the way? Oh, it's in, uh, in May. Oh, and weddings are very expensive, aren't they? Yeah, well, they can be, but we're working to keep the cost down. Mm. Emma's mum and my mum are making the wedding dress, that sort of thing. That's great. Emma's doing the invitations herself, delivering them by hand. Very thrifty. Anyway, I was, I was wondering if there's a, another way around this notice period. Such as? Oh, I don't know, uh, making it shorter, maybe? Let me pay it off some other way? <laughs> uh, to be honest, I'm not sure what we can do off the top of my head. I'll have to get on to our legal people. Well, if you could, that'd be great. And if you can see about those logs, well, that would be good too. Yeah, yeah, I will. <laughs> oh, hello, David. Oh, hi, Ed. How's things? Um, yeah, OK, thanks. You? Yeah, can't grumble. Right, well, see ya. Yeah, see ya. Well, look who it is. A man who threw away seven million. Shut up, Charlie. Why, what's the matter? Don't you want anyone to know? No, if you don't mind. I'd really rather they didn't. It's called confidentiality. Seriously, tell me. Why would anyone in their right mind turn down such an amazing offer for a property that's going to be split in two? <sighs> Money was never the issue. <laughs> really? No. Maybe you'll understand one day, even if you don't know. Yeah, letting sentimentality get in the way of business is never a good idea, Dave. <sighs> Come on, Tate. Now, tell me, David, what's it like up there on the moral high ground? Goodbye, Charlie. Thank you, Helen, for agreeing to this meeting at such short notice. <laughs> Not at all. I'm intrigued. It shouldn't take too long. It's nice to see you both. Yes, thanks, Rob. Um, Gren asked me to be here, just so you know. Yeah, of course. I suppose this affects you too, Rob. Uh, it depends what it's about. Not the shop, presumably. No, no, it's not the shop. That's tomorrow between me, Mum and Helen. Right, of course. What I want to talk about is my will. 
I've already spoken to Tom, and I thought it would be useful if he came along today as well. OK, so what is it you want to say, Gran? Well, I've been thinking about it an awful lot recently, especially with your father in hospital, and I've decided I want to make some changes. Hi, Usha. Uh, I, I'd really like a chat with you. I'm going up to see my mum at the weekend with Ben. So if you're around before then, that'd be great. Uh, something quite big's happened. So if there is a chance to see you, I'd really, really appreciate it. And that's all, really. I hope Alan and Amy are well. Sorry I haven't seen you much recently. But, yeah, if you're available this evening, maybe, that would be great. Bye. So, what you're saying is we won't be getting the lodge now? Yes, Rob. Among other things, that is what Gran's saying. I'm not too proud to admit that I made a mistake when I drew up that will. I only wish it hadn't taken me so long to realise it. You mustn't be too hard on yourself, Gran. No. It's taken all of us far too long to see what should have been obvious from the start. Thank you, Tom. That's true. And now the estate is going to be divided between Tony, Jennifer and Lillian, it'll be up to them, with Tony as executor, to decide how best to do it. And I'm sure they'll do it as fairly as possible. I certainly hope so. But I'm sorry it means you won't get the house. Oh, Grant, that doesn't matter. Um, well, actually, if you don't mind me saying so, that isn't necessarily true. How do you mean? Well, obviously it's Peggy's decision in the end, but having the security of knowing that one day the lodge would be theirs has meant a great deal to Helen and Henry. I doubt it's meant a lot to Henry. You know what I mean. Come on, Tom. It represents real security for their future. But if you're marrying Helen, aren't you providing that security for them? That's right. <laughs> well, yes. You'd hardly want to be relying on some distant legacy to safeguard them, would you? If you put it like that, then no, of course not. You're lucky you caught me. I'm just shutting up shop. Well, I, th I thought I'd let you know uh, that Dad's going to deliver those logs tomorrow. Great. Thanks very much. Um, you're welcome. You didn't need to come over and tell me. You could have texted. That's no problem. I, I wanted to make sure you got the message. Very kind of you. Oh, yeah. Well, I suppose you've uh, managed to speak to your legal people yet? Oh, yes. Um, I had a quick word with the agent. Thanks for reminding me. And he's confirmed you do need to give a full year's notice. Oh, no. But we have come up with a possible alternative. Yeah? If you were to keep all the estate's hedges trimmed and in good order over the notice period, from now onwards, well, that should cover it. What, Really? You'd be willing to do that? We like to try and be accommodating to our neighbours when we can. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. I take it that's a yes. <laughs> yeah, you bet it is. Then it's agreed. Yeah, agreed. Agreed. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Charlie. We can sort out the paperwork by the end of the next week, if you like. <laughs> Sounds good to me. So, you're getting out of livestock altogether? Sums didn't add up. I'm sad, but... Oh, you'll miss the cows. Well, Oliver's going to let me run a bit of beef, so I'll keep my hand in. Hmm. Well, it sounds like you know what you're doing. Yeah, I've got a bit of money saved up. I've been looking at tractors and kit online. Oh, good for you. So, if there's any contracting work going... I'll keep you in mind. That's apart from the hedges, of course. <laughs> They'll be done whatever happens. Bye! Goodbye, Henry. Mm. Bye, Uncle Tom. <laughs> Bye, Henry. Uh, see you soon. And thanks again for my brilliant birthday card. That's OK. <laughs> oh, isn't he adorable? Can I watch my DVD? Oh, what, again? Again. In a minute, darling, when they've gone. Oh, I expect we'll see you again before too long. I'm sure you will. Goodbye, Rob. Goodbye, Helen. Bye, Gran. See you tomorrow, Tom. Yes, see you then. All right, Gran, I'll see you across the road, shall I? Well, I can manage, dear. Well, that's that, then. What do you think? I think Tom's behind this. He must be. <laughs> Why do you say that? Well, who else could it be? He must have talked to Peggy and somehow persuaded her to change her mind. Uh, you don't know Gran as well as I do. Well, no, of course I don't, but what difference does that make? 
She'd only change her mind if she genuinely felt that it was the right thing to do. How do you know that, though? Well, I don't for certain, but I do know what she's like. I'm not convinced. I wish you were, darling. I'm surprised you don't think the same as me. About Gran? About how unfair it is her suddenly taking the lodge away from you and Henry. But she hasn't. Well, as good as. It was never going to be ours until she died anyway. That's missing the point. No, it isn't. Besides, Dad, Auntie Jennifer and Auntie Lillian might still decide to give it to us one day. Yeah, or they might decide to sell it and live off the proceeds themselves. I really don't think that's very likely. Yeah, right. I know what families can be like. But even if they did, it wouldn't matter, would it? Of course it would. What I mean is, you're doing so well at work. I know, but things can change. And what we've got here is already better than a lot of other people. We don't own this place. Usha does. I know. But we'll have a place of our own one day. You mustn't worry about us so much. I can't, I can't help it. Rob, I appreciate your concern for me and Henry, but I promise we'll be OK. Really? Yes. With you to look out for us, how could we be anything else? It feels as if I've been completely out of the loop these last few months. Oh, that's not surprising. Judging by these posters, though, the social life of the village is still going strong. You mean the karaoke night? Well, yes. And this one, in complete contrast. Oh, Lenten Reflections at St Stephen's. Right. Do you think many people will be going to both? Oh, probably not. Personally, I think you have to be drunk to appreciate karaoke. Oh, it's not my sort of thing. Oh, me neither. How's Tony doing, by the way? Oh, very well, thanks. Well, that's good. Yeah, he should be coming home in the next couple of weeks. I can't wait. You must be so relieved. That is putting it mildly. Well, can he walk on his own yet? Well, he, he can if he uses parallel bars or crutches. Right. Well, he's making progress all the time, but we don't think he'll be able to manage the stairs for a while yet. Give it time, though. Hmm? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we're not going to rush things. no. Of course not. It's since he's been having the intense physio that we've really noticed a difference. I'm sure. We'll have to make a few changes around the house, like turning the dining room into a temporary bedroom, but it'd be wonderful to have him back where he belongs. So he'll be coming home in the next couple of weeks, you say? Hopefully, yes. Give it a few more weeks and he should be almost back to normal. I expect you'll probably be gone by then. Uh, yeah, maybe. Have you managed to sort everything out for the move? Not yet. Silly question, really. There are always going to be little hiccups along the way. Yeah. It's going to be very strange without you. But I'm sure you'll come back to visit as often as you can. Mm. You can never leave a place like Ambridge behind completely. No. No, you can't. Anyway, I'd better get on. Of course. And I can't keep putting off walking through the rain. Bye, Ruth. Bye, Pat. Oh, Usha. I got your message, but not till very late last night, I'm afraid. Oh, that's okay. As luck would have it, my lunchtime appointment's cancelled, so I'm free for an hour or so after one, if that's any good. Yeah, that'd be great. Shall I come over to you? Of course. Is everything all right? I didn't get the chance to ask you yesterday what you thought about Gran's change to her will. Oh, it's fine by me. I thought you'd be OK. As you obviously saw, though, Rob wasn't so keen. I don't understand why he seems to think it's taking the lodge away from you and Henry. No, I know. He somehow got it into his head that we're entitled to it. But that's just because that's what Gran was thinking at the time. Yeah, I know. You don't have to tell me. And now she's changed her mind to something that's fair all around. Yeah, of course she has. I think sometimes Rob can get a little overprotective towards us. It's not like you're going to be left out on the streets. No, of course not. We had a chat about it after you'd gone, and I'm sure he sees it the same way as us now. I hope so. Don't worry, Tom. I'm sure he will. Apart from anything, doesn't seem right to pin all our hopes on grand dying. Exactly. I don't know about you, but I'd rather rely on my own efforts to secure my future. Absolutely. And right now... I'm very excited about developing the partnership with Neil. Yeah, that sounds great. He's got some very good ideas. Oh. Sorry I'm a bit late. Oh, that's OK. 
I got absolutely drenched by a car driving through a huge puddle. Oh, no. God, look. Yeah, I had to go home, change my trousers and everything. It was terrible. Poor you, Mum. Uh, do you want a cup of tea before we start? Uh, no, no, I'm fine, thanks. Uh, sorry, Tom, you were saying about Neil? Oh, don't worry, I'll tell you later. Is everything OK in the shop? Yep, and he's fine. So, should we make a start? I know it sounds a bit dramatic, Usha, but it honestly feels like he's betrayed me. Well, if that's how you feel. I do. After so many years, everything we've done, always making decisions together. Yes. And then for him to suddenly announce he's changed his mind, just like that. It must have been quite a shock. Well, even worse is, it's completely non-negotiable. No discussion, nothing. It's definitely not like him. And he didn't even tell me first. You're talking about Jill? Yeah. It felt like some sort of conspiracy. Oh, I'm sure it wasn't. Oh, it's been horrible. Oh, poor you. I don't even know if I can trust him anymore. I'm sure you can. Pip's really angry too. Is she? Yeah. She's hardly spoken a word to either of us since we told her. Does she know it wasn't your decision? Mm. She still thinks we've taken her for a ride, though. What about the boys? How have they reacted? Oh, they've both been really quiet about it, so it's harder to tell. Josh just seemed to brush it off. He's probably hiding how he really feels. Teenage boys usually do. You can tell Ben's upset, though, even if he doesn't see it. You said in your message you were taking him up to your mum's. Yeah, and that's what he's worried about more than anything. Poor Granny Heather, she'll be all on her own. Oh, that's very thoughtful of him. I know. It's obviously really bothering him, so I thought it'd be good for him to see her. As well as you. Yeah. I'm still dreading telling her, though. Of course you are. It feels like the family's breaking apart. Oh, Ruth. No, I can't believe that's going to happen. I don't know what to do, Shad. <sighs> How are things with Jill at the moment? Oh, she's overcompensating like mad, trying to include me in every little decision she makes. Well, I'm sure she's trying her best. But it's too much. We all know the one decision that really mattered is the one she and David didn't let me have a say in. And that's not going to change, is it? Sometimes it feels like the whole bloody Archer clan have lined up against me. I can see why you might think that, but I'm sure they haven't. No, but that's what it feels like. Mm. Just being able to talk to you, someone outside the family. I need some time to myself, just to think all this through. Maybe this weekend? Depends how Mum takes it. Yeah. Oh, don't get me wrong, there's a huge part of me that never wanted to leave Brookfield. I'm sure that's true. It's been our home for a long time, and an awful lot's happened there. Yes, it has. Three children, breast cancer, all the other ups and downs that go with family life. Why, well, it's about the good times and the bad. Celebrating success and owning up to our faults. Because none of us is perfect. No, of course not. Your home and everything that happens in it becomes part of you. But then Mum having a fall and the decision about the road, coming at more or less the same time, changed everything. Well, that's true. David and I, I thought we knew what we were doing. I thought we were together on this. No, Mum, you're not listening. Basically, I can't commit to the sort of time that's going to be needed to run the shop in the future. Oh. Not full-time or part-time or any time. Not realistically. But, Helen, you it don't... It just doesn't fit with my commitment to Henry. And to Rob. I see. I've tried managing again for a couple of weeks now, and frankly, it's reminded me why I gave it up in the first place. That's hardly any time. You should give it longer. But I'm exhausted all the time. Which isn't fair to either of them. 
And I don't suppose Rob said anything about this? Of course we've discussed it. (laughs) And actually, he was very supportive about me going back in the first place. Oh, was he? Yes. He even encouraged me when I wasn't sure. But in the end, I know I'd be making a bad job of running the shop and looking after my family. Oh! You make it sound as if nobody's ever had to face such a dilemma before. No, I'm just telling you how I feel. I don't care what anyone else might do in the same situation. So, that's your final decision? Yes, it is. What do you think, Tom? Well, as a matter of fact, I think I might have a solution. What's that? How about we close the shop altogether? What? It's amazing, Tom. Exactly what Rob suggested. Close the shop? Uh, I know, Mum, it sounds radical. I I know it's not been doing so well lately, but but, but there have been reasons for that. Like Tina. We can turn it round easily enough. Can we, Mum? Yes, of course we can. The shop's an integral part of the whole Bridge Farm organic enterprise. Why give it all up now? How about barely covering our overheads or declining demand due to online shopping or even organics not being as fashionable as they were? All of that is arguable. Or maybe just admitting the shop has had its day. Oh, Tom. Looking at our recent sales figures, I think we'd be better off cutting our losses and getting out now. Seriously. And I have to say, I think Tom and Rob are right. It already feels like a weight's been lifted from my shoulders at the thought of it. So that's it. You're both agreed we close Ambridge Organics. It does seem to make sense, Mum. I agree. Though, of course, we'll have to talk it through with Dad first, see what he thinks. Yeah. He'll have his own take on it all, and we should listen to that. For David to make such a huge decision at the last minute, he must have been absolutely convinced it was right. The only decision he could make. I didn't think you were going to take his side. What is this, Usha? No, I'm just saying there's always more to these things than might appear at first glance. Well, don't you think I know that? Yes, but sometimes it's hard to be objective. Like I said, Ruth, none of us is perfect. Of course. We all do things which hurt others without us realising at the time. And which we later regret. Yes, of course. Usha, I know I'm not perfect, and I've done things I shouldn't. But this is completely different. There's no doubt this is a huge bump in the road for you and David. I'm certain you'll get past it. I wish I could be. Just think what would happen if you did move, and then, God forbid, your mum died. I don't say that. Well, how would you cope, really, if suddenly you found yourself stuck in an unfamiliar place, hundreds of miles away from your friends and family? But what about mum right now? What if she keeps going for years? As hopefully she will. Well, we just don't know. I can't leave her up there feeling like she's been abandoned, can I? No, of course you can't. It's all right for David. He knows exactly what he wants. But how can I choose between me mum and me family... How can I do that, Usha? 